this afternoon, we're going to talk about how to ace the panel interview. Distinguishing what a panel interview is, how to prepare for the panel interview, and how to ace the panel interview. Well, distinguishing the panel interview from other types. We know the one-on-one -on -one interview is just as the name suggests. It's when you're interviewing one-on-one. -on -one. That's pretty typical in the way that we interview. Then there's the group interview. This one is really challenging. This is a group of candidates interviewed at the same time for the same position. The interviewees or the candidates may be evaluated by a single interviewer or a group of interviewers. And the group of candidates is given a topic for discussion and supervisors or observers assess the performance of each candidate very carefully. The candidate should actively participate in such discussions and make responses to as many questions as possible complimenting other candidates' views and debating politely. Have you ever participated in one of these types of interviews, these group interviews? Anybody here? No. I never have. And no. I, hope I, I hope I never have to. You're actually competing with right. the other candidates right in that session. I um I did, Robin. Mm -hmm. I participated in an interview like that when I was went for a telemarketing job. Uh-huh. One of my crazy while in grad school jobs. Um, and the reason that they did a group interview is because they share all the information about what the quotas were going to be and the hours and how inflexible they were and things like that. And it, that kind of weeds people out from a job like that. Sometimes they do that in the the door to door sales kind of jobs too, um, because there's a lot of information they have to give you because they don't want to go through the training process and then lose you. They want to kind of lay it all out there in the beginning. So yeah, yeah, it's quite efficient. Uh, similar, perhaps, to inefficiency at least to the panel or team interview where you have one candidate and two or more interviewers, uh, two or more experts from the specific field. Or uh, when I was at the consulting company, uh, it was a cross section of the entire company who would interview one candidate. Uh, interview questions are usually raised by each member of the panel and the single candidate is asked uh, to answer the questions. Uh, these are thought to be uh, quite uh, efficient. Why? why? Why are these types of interviews efficient? Because maybe they have uh, different um, uh, majors, ma ma different thought or different questions. Yeah, yeah. The different people who are conducting the interview have different backgrounds and different types of questions for sure. Um, the, and I'll tell you, the, the types, the, the group or the team or the panel interview, I've found that companies use these words interchangeably. Um, and nowadays, the, no matter the type of interview, they can be conducted in person or, or virtually or a combination thereof. Maybe you go to the company's site the actual location, you meet meet face to face with one of the interviewers, but some of the others are participating virtually. You can have some kind of combination sometimes. If you are the candidate, it's really important to get yourself clear in advance how the interview will be conducted, um, what type it will be, um, and uh, and where it will be, and, and who will be present during that interview. The panel interview is a single candidate and multiple interviewers. That's the key. I really want to focus today on that type of interview because that's, that's fairly common. The group interview that, Lisa, you were talking about is much more rare. 
Um, so, so deep down, you're the center of attention, something you always wanted to be. You want to be the celebrity, right? Uh, get your 15 minutes of fame. Sure, being the center of attention in the right context might be a lot of fun, might be an ego boost. But in an interview, you're not the star. You're a job seeker. And instead of adoring fans, you find yourself in a room full of professionals who are conducting an interview. And what is your biggest concern? You know, it feels like gang up on you, but they're, it's not really that. But, you know, you, you, they're firing questions at you and you're just one person answering all these questions. It's extremely intimidating. Intimidating. Indeed, because they're judging you. That's the whole intention, right, Lisa? They're there to judge you. Yeah, um, it's also it's it's also very hard to um, when when you have to answer to more than one person. It's 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 difficult to um, you know they're throwing different questions at you, and you have to kind of manage that because sometimes you know you're getting a lot of questions and and. Different people have different tones. Different people have different personalities and attitudes. So you have to be able to really kind of switch it up. Yes. Here. Yes, exactly. We'll get into that a little bit more here. Mm -hmm. Why do companies conduct panel interviews? Some, Especially some people liken them to, to being the target on a firing squad or an inquisition. <laughs> That's really not the intention. The panel interviews tend to be more efficient. As we said, it's an easy way for a group of people to get to know you quickly. One single panel interview can take the place of multiple interviews, individual interviews over the, over the course of many days or, or sometimes weeks, and can help streamline the hiring process, which can save the company both time and money. A panel interview is also an opportunity to observe you in a group setting and see how you not only interact with different personality types and communication styles, but how you handle stress. Uh, small, large, large companies, nonprofits, academic institutions, government entities, they like using panel interviews for this reason. Finally, panel interviews are also helpful when a company requires a consensus among several individuals when hiring for a specific position. That means they want to have a group of people agree on who they want to hire. So how do you prepare for a panel interview? Well, it's very similar to how you would prepare for a one-on-one -on -one interview. You practice responding to questions, you study your resume, the job description, you research the company, their mission, product, services, their competition, their company culture, you research their history, and you certainly get yourself clear about how you are a fit for the job, right? You prepare your questions to ask. You prepare your outfit. You make sure you know the location, the, the commute. You've got your folder already with extra copies of your resume and your credentials, samples of your work. Um, you do all the things you do for any other interview, one-on-one -on -one interview. But in a panel interview, you really want to pay special attention to practicing questions that deal with team dynamics, such as tell me about a time you experienced conflict within a team and how you handled it. How do you handle criticism, especially on an important team project? Tell about how you handled a project that failed. How do you handle multiple project priorities? In, in preparing for a panel interview, you probably want to practice with a group of friends, not just one-on-one, -on -one, but you really want to get the perspective of a group of people in terms of how you respond to questions. Get a varied perspective. Here are some extra tips to prepare for a panel interview. Know your room. How many of us have a difficult time remembering names? I do. 
I certainly do. What you want to do in preparing for a panel interview is ask your contact ahead of time who you're interviewing with. You're meeting a lot of people very quickly and it's easy to forget names. The only thing worse than not knowing someone's name is calling them by the wrong name. So you want to research their names, their titles, backgrounds, and roles in the company. You may know ahead of time what they look like from having researched them on LinkedIn or the company website that often has a picture. But when you're on this call um, or in the room, you want to maybe have a piece of note paper in front of you and jot down their names in order of how they're arranged in the conversation. Uh, another tactic to remembering the names is to repeat the name after you're introduced to the person. Nice, nice to meet you, Deborah. Then use that person's name when you're answering specific interview questions. Like, well, Deborah, in my last job, such and such happened. So use their names repetitively throughout the conversation. Another tip, I really, really like this one, is to, to, to thank the panel up front. Most candidates enter an interview, especially a panel interview, thinking about themselves and the impression they're going to make during the interview. You want to begin your panel interview in a unique way by first thanking the entire group for everything they did to arrange their schedules to take the time to meet with you. Even after the individual introductions are made, take that kind of what might be an awkward moment to, to pause, to breathe. Even if, some, if somebody already threw a question at you, just say, you know what, hey folks, I just want to thank you all for being here, for taking time out of your precious schedule. The other thing you want to do is really focus. So no matter how much research you do ahead of time, it's easy to get flustered when facing so many strangers, especially when they're asking you questions. Remember this, the ultimate goal of, of a panel interview is to find, that they want to find the right person for the job. And your goal is to prove that you are that person. So rather than allowing yourself to feel overwhelmed by their scrutiny, use it as an opportunity to showcase your flexibility and stress management skills. Even if it might seem like you're answering the same questions over and over again, and believe me, there will be repetition. Keep in mind that different people have different ways of processing information and listening. I think you alluded to this earlier, Maria. And we know some people zone out and they don't listen in the first place. So you might be asked a repetitive question. Mm -hmm. the, the panel is often made up of individuals from different departments and management levels. So each person is going to have a different takeaway from your response based on their area of focus. So you want to vary your responses and tailor them to the individual asking you. Not only will it make your answers more specifically targeted, but it can provide you with a unique opportunity to showcase your knowledge, your expertise, and your comfort in a less than comfortable situation. I always like a sense of humor too. My husband went to a group panel interview years ago and I packed his suit for him. And it was, a, it was an older suit, I didn't realize, and it was about five sizes too small. Mm -hmm. And he has such a great sense of humor and wit that he's literally standing in front of this, this group interviewing, and he actually acknowledged that he felt like a sausage, and they mm -hmm. he, he had the room cracking up. <laughs> hmm. Guess that's the last time you packed for him, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Next, you want to manage grace under pressure. So while you might feel like you're a bug under a magnifying glass, you don't want to act like one in a panel interview. Make sure you're physically projecting confidence. If this is a virtual panel interview, make sure you're looking at and addressing the individuals by name, 
whoever asked you the question, hunching over in your chair, wrapping your arms around your body or bouncing nervously might be how you deal with the stress of the situation, but they are all nervous tics that a potential employer could mistake as signs that you don't want to be there or that you're uncomfortable with groups. And I say, if you're being interviewed by a panel, this company is much more likely to value and pr promote teamwork. So you need to present yourself as relaxed and as comfortable as possible. Uh, similarly, managing stress and your thoughtfulness. Panel interviews have a reputation of feeling like uh, a bit like you're being uh, in front of a firing squad because you're being interviewed by a number of people and they're all competing with, with each other and trying to get their questions answered within a limited amount of time. And it can be a little overwhelming. While you might be facing a lot of questions all at once in a panel, there's no prize for answering them the fastest. In a way, it's up to you to control the speed of the interview. Take your time to formulate your responses. Not too much time, but take a breath. You're not there to impress them with your speed. You're there to impress them with your knowledge and your skills. So before you answer any question, take a breath and tailor what you're about to say to whomever asked it. Keep your answers brief and focused. What are some things that you do during an interview to keep you calm? I try to control my breathing a little bit. You know, sure to, thing. Try to do slow breaths while they're talking, um, you know, without, without doing any kind of deep breathing that's noticeable, but just try right. to like right. slow my breathing down. Right. I try to sit up kind of just like stay stay focused keep my head in the conversation and really listen to the yeah. question and, and the comments that are coming back from the interviewers really keep your your focus on the game and certainly breathe some mistakes to avoid being interviewed under any circumstance can be stressful. And when you're in a panel, that stress is multiplied by the number of people asking you the questions. So the added stress means it's even easier to slip up and make ex uh, mistakes, including not being prepared. Oh, the screener or the first interviewer like me. So I'm in, I, I don't need to prepare, not. You must prepare. Uh, not being calm, we talked about that. Um, people are firing questions at you, can feel a bit like an attack. But you have to make sure no matter what, that you control your emotions and consider your answers before you speak. It's possible that whoever's interviewing you is intentionally trying to rile you up so they can see how you react under pressure. So you want to stay calm and cool and collected. And don't forget, this, this works really well, to say thank you for asking, even if it was a really tricky, difficult question. Another uh, mistake people make is not being your yourself. You always want to present your best self when going in an interview, but you also want to make sure you're being authentic. Putting forth a personality that isn't you and isn't your own is a dangerous game to play and can actually end up biting you in the end. An employer wants to know the person they're interviewing is the person they might be hiring. So pretending to be someone you're not just to impress them in the short run is really going to hurt you in the long run anyway. So be yourself. Some other <laughs> What's that? I'm laughing at the photo. <laughs> yes, yeah, some other mistakes to avoid. I, I intentionally put that there for that reason. I thought it was really cute. Um, you go to the interview and you didn't bring enough copies of your resume. Ooh. Ask ahead of time how many people will be there 
and make sure you have extras because you don't, you never know how many extra people might show up. What the, uh, I have a question, please. Yes. What if the uh, if the interview is online or uh, virtual? How yes. can I share with them the resume or anything else? That is an excellent question. So what I would do is uh, make sure that the your contact the person who are uh, with the company, whether it's the screener or the recruiter or the secretary or receptionist, whoever set that interview up with you, that you have sent her your resume and requested that she be sure that the people who are participating in that interview have it in front of them. So I should ask the interviewer to share my document with the other, with others? Absolutely. Uh, in advance before the... In advance, yes. Yeah. In advance, yes. Okay. The other mistake people make is, uh, that you don't want to make is you don't want to overstock the interviewer. So I talked about doing your research on uh, all the members of the interviewing panel. You want to impress the panel with your attention to detail, but you don't want to concern them with obsessive digging or revealing too much knowledge about their personal details. Maybe you Googled their name and saw family photos. In particular, in their family photos, don't go there in the, in the conversation. Having a little background on each person might help you break the ice. It may be about sports in general or their career history, especially if there's common ground. But just like in a one-on-one -on -one interview, don't get too relaxed and overly friendly with anything about their family or their, their history. Another mistake people make is... They don't involve the entire panel in the interview. So when answering questions, don't simply address the individual who asked the question. Make sure you're including the whole panel in your response. Always start out and finish your answers by directing them at the person who asked, but be sure to also make eye contact with everyone else on the panel. This keeps everyone in the panel engaged in what you're saying, and it helps to show that you're confident in your answers and comfortable in the situation. Even if one of the interviewers is intimidating, make sure you engage with everyone and don't hesitate to ask how you're doing during the conversation. You might even say, did that communicate? Am I being clear? If possible, make sure you can find at least one point of connection with everything on the panel at some time during that interview. It's much easier to do when you have done your research up front. If you can speak about their, their work or their experience and how you'd envision working with that member, uh, communicate this to, to that member uh, during the conversation. Again, names are very important. So when answering a question from a specific panel member, address them by name. For example, well, that's an interesting question, Sarah. Here is how I would navigate this problem. And then of course, you're making eye contact with the other members of the panel. Uh, another mistake, you don't present as a team player. So often a panel uh, includes people who might be your eventual teammates and coworkers. So you want to start laying the groundwork by being cooperative from the beginning. Be observant during your interview and take notice of how they interact with each other. Not only will it help you tailor your responses to questions, but seeing how the panel gets along with each other can be a great way for you to get an inside look at the overall cultural and team dynamics of the company. Do the panelists get along with and work well with, with each other? 
Is there a lot of cooperation or is there conflict? If you see conflict, you want to be sure you're staying neutral. It's, it's human nature to want to be liked. And in a panel in, in, interview, it's a good idea to remain as neutral and friendly to every person on the panel. If you're in a situation where there are clear personality dynamics among the panelists, resist trying to fit in by buddying up with one of the panelists in particular, because that could be the wrong person. Maybe that's the person you're, you're about to replace if you get hired. As you know, you're also interviewing the company. So a panel interview is a great opportunity for you to see if this team and if this company is somewhere you want to be working, if this team is a team you want to be working with. Another mistake might be that you forget to thank everyone at the end. So again, very briefly, in closing, you want to thank the whole group for taking the time. If it's in person, you want to be sure to shake everyone's hands and ask for business cards. This gives you the exact spelling and latest titles for each panel member. And then, of course, you want to send a personalized thank you note to each panel member. Let me ask it that way. Who can distinguish a panel interview from a group or a one-on-one -on -one interview? What's the difference in a panel interview? A multiple interviewers with one person being interviewed. Yes, very good. What are at least one or two things you would do differently to prepare for a panel interview? Be patient more and uh, control your uh, self or your breath. Uh, try to breathe. Take more breath to be more patient, more calm. I mean, right? Absolutely. Be extra yeah. patient. Be Focus on their questions. Yes, Don't hesitate uh, when you answer your their questions. Yes, so time, but not that long time. Just uh, the enough time to answer clearly their questions. Yes, very good. Make sure that you uh, know everybody's name. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, Thank them at the beginning and at the end of the interview. Excellent. Very, very good. What are some things that you might have learned today that you might do differently to ace your next panel interview? Make sure that you thank everybody for taking the time to be there to interview you. Which yes. I, I would have never thought of. I would always, as you say, do it be you saying to do it beforehand, and I always did it afterwards. So definitely I would do it beforehand now. Yeah. And, and I and I would say uh Joyce beforehand and afterwards as well. Okay. All yeah. right, excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Also other, you, other thoughts or questions or comments. I was, um, I yeah. was just gonna say, you know, also remember to be mindful of the fact that under certain circumstances, depending on the type of job, as you said, there might be, it might be, they might be trying to see how you respond under pressure um, or under a stressful situation by throwing questions at you or um, questioning an answer you gave to someone else on the panel. So reminding yourself to Take deep breath, remain um, pleasant and, and calm and don't appear annoyed when if that happens. I, I, I had a, a client one time who told me that he kind of fell into that trap. He was on a panel interview and, and the, um, there was one person who just kept barking questions at him as he was trying to answer someone else's questions. And he was he would he was trying to open start answering the question, and the guy just kept barking at him, barking at him. And 
finally he just kind of snapped and said, if you wait one minute, I will get to your question. Ooh. And he said, Ooh. as soon as he did it, he realized <laughs> that he <laughs> fell into the trap and that, you know, it wasn't going to be, you know, they, they got what they wanted. They wanted to see how he was going to react in a stressful situation. And he, he blew wow. it. So he blew it. Wow. He so to Rawa's point, you need to elevate your level of patience. Right. Absolutely. Because they may be doing that deliberately mm -hmm. to see yeah. if they can rile you. Yep. Especially that. like a sales job or like a job where there's a lot I of... I think working with, with kids in schools help, uh, help a lot to, to be more patient. Yeah. Because, yes. uh, yeah. That's a very, very uh, necessary quality yeah. and skill yeah. that you must have working in a school system. Yeah, uh, specifically with this, with kids, uh, with the small ages of kids. So they need more patience. Yes. So, yeah. And, and Rawa, I was on an interview where uh, in a uh, grammar school system yeah. and I was conducting a math lesson for a sixth grade class, only the students weren't the students, they were the other teachers and administration. And they were deliberately acting like really bad students and <laughs> giving me the hardest time ever. Yeah. And wanting to see how I would react. Yeah, it was probably my most challenging interview of all time. <laughs> I'm so sorry. so sorry. Not at all. Go ahead, Rawa. Just the middle school need more uh, experience to handle the hard, harder, hard people. I mean, hard students. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But others, I think it's okay. All right. Any other final thoughts, comments? This was great. Yeah. All right, folks. Well, thank you for your time today and, and uh, arranging your schedules to be here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're have welcome. A great, uh, have a great rest, rest of the afternoon. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Have a good Bye. time. Bye. Bye. Bye.